Good afternoon, everyone, and Happy New Year, and uh, welcome to another episode of Condo Insider. Uh, my name is Jane Sugimura, and I'm going to be your host today. And uh, my guest is uh, Laurie McGuire. She's an attorney and a partner uh, and uh, with the law firm of Porter McGuire Kiakona LLP. Hi, Laurie. Hi, Jane. How's Thanks going? for joining me. Yeah, my pleasure. Definitely. And, and, you know, we're talking and, you know, it, it's been quite a year with the pandemic and it's, you know, created quite a lot of challenges, you know, for association. And, you know, uh, the reason for, you know, the reason we came up with this topic is I got a call from uh, the Real Estate Commission. And, you know, they're the ones who get all the, you know, con uh, the complaints and concerns from, you know, the public and condo owners. And, and uh, I asked them, well, you know, what are some of the concerns that have been raised? And she says, you know, the number one concern that, that people were calling about were, were meetings. Uh, number one, board meetings and the lack thereof, probably because with the pandemic, I mean, we, we had to kind of figure out how to hold a meeting, right? Oh yeah, it was, it was pretty stressful at first because, you know, most people weren't using Zoom yet or, and many people never heard of WebEx at that point in time. So yes, it was very stressful initially. Right, and one of the challenges was that, you know, that we had these government regulations that says thou shalt not gather, mm -hmm. Correct. right? Yes. And, and so, I mean, that was, that was one of the, the biggest challenges. I mean, because you can't have a board meeting with, with owners uh, because then you're in violation of the gathering rules, you know, that the government had issued. But, you know, I think uh, somebody asked, and, and uh, you can chime in here, but, you know, with the, gov with the mayor, someone, he, he's kind of clarified that those rules oh, yeah. don't apply to association meetings, right? That's right, because they're business meetings. They're not social gatherings. We gather for purposes of conducting association business. So there's a difference. Okay, so we're exempt from the gathering requirement, but still, it's not, I mean, people didn't, you know, feel right you know, getting well, together in a room to have the, these meetings. You still so, need um, a mask and you still right. need a social distance. Right. And, you know, and I, I guess, uh, you know, somebody was, I mean, we all kind of discovered that there's a provision in, I mean, the uh, statute, the five four chapter 514B that would allow condominiums to hold board meetings rem remotely, right? Yes, that would be 514B. 125 subsection C. Uh -huh, that and basically says that unless otherwise provided in the declaration or the bylaws, a board may permit any meeting to be conducted by any means of communication through which all directors participating may simultaneously hear one another during the meeting. Right. And, you know, uh, being an old timer, I mean, that I, I can remember when that when the legislature uh, put that provision in, you know, the, the, the chapter, and that was way back in when Iniki hit Kauai, right. and there were, and, and people couldn't get to the island, and, you know, they had to deal with damage to their uh, condominiums, and, and a lot of the board members didn't live on Kauai, right. and so, uh, so one of, so, so that provision was put in there, and at the time, I mean, this was before the, you know, the, the, the video technology, and, that reference to uh, being able to hear each other simultaneously referred to conference calls, telephone right. conference calls. But now, right. what, what are they? What are they using to do these? Well, meetings? now everybody's using Zoom, pretty for the most part, Zoom and WebEx. Uh huh. And a uh, GoToMeeting is another application. So there are several available now for use. And um, you know, I've had minimal experience with WebEx, but I can tell you that Zoom is very user friendly and i would say probably most of my board meetings have been through zoom and so you know uh so what do you say to an association because a, a, a lot of associations may have you know older people who aren't tech you know tech savvy. Uh, advanced or you know tech users i mean how how do they you know do this because i know when when you know when when they came to our association it was one of my board members who mm -hmm. decided we would use Zoom and you know got all of us on board. That's how it happened. But what if you don't have somebody like that on your board? Well, oftentimes you would talk to your property manager because they're holding Zoom meetings all the time and participating in them. 
so, you know, in the, in the same way that a property manager would gather people together uh, for a conference call meeting with their board, they could also gather people and, and uh, you know, at a particular place that's appropriate and instruct everyone in terms of how to use it. And I know we've sent out instructions to certain members of the board telling them how to upload Zoom, the application, and then how to sign on. And basically, you know, once the property manager sends you the link, quote unquote, you click on that link and then you follow the prompts that, that allow you to uh, basically have your video and your audio. So it's not, it's not difficult. And believe me, I mean, I'm no tech wizard myself. So if I can do it, anybody can do it. Right. So I think, you know, in the beginning, it was very challenging, but I'm kind of used to it now. I think we're into our seventh or eighth month of Zoom board meetings. So, yes. you know, I've kind of gotten used to it. And what happens in our board meetings is um, I appoint another board member to basically be the host mm -hmm. because I can't, you know, I, I've got an agenda that I've got to run. And so I and so my uh, host, my board member who becomes the host decides who gets to come in and make sure that they're, you know, they're okay mm -hmm. and make sure, you know, that certain people, you know, um, don't speak, right? They, they, they have that mute function. Right, right. And I found out that the host can also control what they put on the chat. Mm -hmm. right. I didn't realize that, but one of my board members complained that it was this, uh, it was, um, uh, it was uh, it inter, it, in the, the people, you know, uh, uh, leaving emails on in the chat room oh. was interfering with the board meetings. And I didn't, I, I, I wasn't paying, I mean, I could see it, but I wasn't paying any right. attention to it because mm -hmm. I was more concentrated on my agenda. But, you know, there are things like that, that, you know, that uh, I, I didn't realize. And in any way, uh, my, my board member who was the host, you know, was, could control the chat so that the, every, no, nobody else could see it. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, so, so right. those technological things I think, you know, uh, you know, it, it's good that you have one person basically handling that part of it where the other people just, you know, participate in the meeting. And there's ways you can raise your hand, right? Right. You can yes, raise your exactly. hand and, and, be, be, and without, you know, having to raise your hand and wait for somebody to actually see you with your hand up. Right. And right. so, you know, I think everybody's kind of getting used to, the, you know, these uh, teleconferencing mm -hmm. uh, uh Pro platforms, I guess they call them, right? In, in many ways, they're much easier than having to travel somewhere to go to a meeting with a whole group of people. And definitely it's safe. You know, you don't have and, to and worry about, uh, you know, catching anyone else's germs or anything like that. And it's uh, very accommodating. And one other thing, can owners participate in these Zoom meetings or yes. in these teleconferencing? Yes, yes definitely. I mean, that's the whole thing with a Zoom meeting. I know it's, it's my understanding with Zoom anyway, you can purchase different options. So for example, you can purchase an option on Zoom that allows 100 participants. And then there are other options that allow for, uh, I think up to 300 participants. So there are different plans, you know, for, for uh, different groups. And, uh, and so it accommodates however many people you want to have on the Zoom call. You would only need one host to host the meeting. And typically, in my experience, that's the property manager will host the meeting. And then all of the owners come on as, as a guest to the Zoom meeting. Well, you know, there's, and you know, in order to, to get on any of these platforms, whether it's Zoom or GoToMeeting or WebEx, I mean, there's like a, a, a an ID number you have to have and a password sometimes, right? Yeah. So you, it's not something that you want to post on, on an internet because then you might get people who aren't even owners or residents, you know, uh, uh, you know, part, part, end up participating in these meetings. So well, how do you get how do you get the how do you get the uh, information out to the owners so that they can participate? You know, and, you know, without, you know, breaching any type of confidentiality, like you don't want to post this, mm -hmm. you know, all of this information on the internet. So how would you, how would you suggest that boards do this? I would say basically, however, you're going to post uh, a notice to your board members, typically, uh, other than posting a notice 
you know, in the common area because you don't want like tenants to appear at the board meeting. So if you have their email address, then you would email it to them. Otherwise, you would send it by mail. Uh, if you know which units have owners in it, you could post it on, on their door in an, a closed envelope. So there are many ways uh, to communicate this, but I, I wouldn't advise just posting it um, you know, in the same area where you normally post your notices, because like you said, you don't want tenants to attend. That being said, there is a way to uh, basically uh, minimize who can and cannot attend the meetings, by, like you said, by password, et cetera. So the host is able to regulate who is allowed in the meeting and who's not allowed in the meeting. Mm -hmm. Okay, and, and you know, once you got, you know, now, now you've got everybody, you know, on this teleconferencing platform and you've got the board members who can all hear each other simultaneously and uh, you've got owners who are, you know, part, and they can, if they don't have a computer, they can participate by telephone. Right. If right? they have a smartphone, yes, they can. So, so that means a, that go ahead. they have a number that they phone in and they can participate and, and, and they can speak and hear what's going yeah. on in the meeting. Well, for example, if you have an iPhone, you put, you upload the application, the Zoom app onto your phone. And then if, if you have been emailed what's considered the link to click on Zoom, what will happen is when you click on that link, it will open your the Zoom app automatically. And then you can participate from there using your iPhone or your smartphone, whatever type it may be. I see. And so, so that means that uh, you would be part of this meeting, but you just wouldn't be on the screen. I mean, what right. shows up is maybe a little box with your initials. Yes. Well, it, you know, if you're on your iPhone, yes, you can only see one person at a time. Mm -hmm. But if you're on like your iPad or your computer, you're going to be able to see more than one person. So it all depends on how big your screen is and how many how many attendees you have. OK. And um, and, you know, uh, once now that we've got everybody, you know, participating in these meetings, uh, you know, one of the other uh, concerns that the Real Estate Commission uh, uh, brought up is that there are still boards who don't allow the owners to participate during the meeting. They're only allowed to, to participate, if at all, maybe during an owner's forum, or they're told, oh no, the board has taken a vote and we've decided you can't, you know, we're not going to let owners participate. Is that, can they do that? Okay, well, here's the distinction. Condominiums cannot do that. Uh, in 2017, 514B 125 subsection A was amended to mandate that all owners can now participate in any discussion or deliberation of board members. So, and it says shall, they shall be allowed to participate. So mm -hmm. it's not just the owner's forum. They're allowed to participate during the meeting pursuant to owner's participation rules. So for example, with us, we have provided, drafted owner's participation rules for a number of our projects, our associations, as well as resolutions. So the board can pass the resolution, then they adopt these participation rules. And once they're adopted, you have to provide a copy of those rules to everyone, to all the owners, and they have to be available whenever you have any meeting and they can participate. However, with regard to homeowners associations, boards can decide who can and cannot actually participate in the meeting. And the statute is 421J-5 subsection A. And it basically says that a majority of a quorum of the board can decide whether or not owners may participate during the meeting. So HOA boards do have the ability to relegate owners to an owner's forum in terms of participation. Um, but, and that's on a, a per meeting basis because it talks about a majority of the quorum of the board members. So, you know, every board member, or excuse me, every board meeting, they would decide on that topic with an HOA. But mm -hmm. with regard to condominiums, 
absolutely, they have to be allowed to participate. It's mandatory. And you, you had you, you were talking about owners uh, participation rules. What kind of rules are these? Uh, well, for example, um, one of the rules typically is that owners are allowed to speak for two minutes at a time on any issue. So let's say there are five owners present at a board meeting. Each owner present may talk for two minutes on each issue being discussed by the board. And so it rotates and then they're allowed to talk for another two minutes if they choose to do so. And then after they've all spoken during that period of time, the board makes their decision on that particular issue. And that applies with each issue being discussed by the board. And uh, you know there are other uh, rules that basically mandate conduct. You can't be swearing at a meeting. Um, you know, if you're if you swear, then you basically they take away your ability to speak. You know, if you're swearing and and you're being hostile to other board members, things like mm -hmm. that. Okay, and um, and 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 the reason uh, for these rules is is to basically allow the owners to speak, but not yet you know, interfere with the chair's running of the board meeting because the chair has got an agenda. Right, exactly. exactly. Right, exactly. and so yeah. in, in order to, but you know, what the chair does, what this uh, rule change does is it, it requires the board to balance the right of owners to participate and for the, the, the chair to complete its agenda. And yeah. I think it, I think the, 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 the rules also, provide for the chair to kind of be in charge. It's up to his discretion. It depends on his agenda. Right. He's got a long agenda. He can cut people, tell people in the beginning, hey, I've got a long agenda. So, you know, we're, we're, we're gonna have to limit people speaking. And, you know, so so if you have to speak, make sure, you know, you you, you say what you wanna say and, and, and keep it short because we have an agenda that we need to finish. Well, and, and that's what the rules are for. Right? right. So everybody knows in advance what's expected of them at that particular meeting, including the members of the board. Right. So they know that owners that are there are going to be able to speak. But what you don't want is is owners to repeat themselves or board members for that matter to repeat themselves. Right. You want or, for, or for the owners to hijack a meeting. Right. When yes. uh, right when, exactly. when when you've got you know the board press and, and the chair is basically in charge of a of a board meeting and and the chair's primary duty is to get through this agenda. Right, and, yes. And, in, and in, the, in the interim, to accommodate owners who have come to the meeting and to allow them to participate in a meaningful way without interfering with them completing the agenda. Exactly, and that way decisions, you know, the owners have input in board decisions before the decisions are actually made as opposed to after the fact. Uh-huh. And you know, there's another issue that you know it keeps coming up. There are boards, and I guess the pandemic uh, made it even uh, even uh, more in use. Is a lot of boards are taking to making board decisions via email. Mm -hmm. Is that permitted under the statute or you know the governing documents of a condominium? No, absolutely not. Again. When 514B125A was amended in 2017, it now mandates owners have the ability to participate in all discussions or deliberations. Well, emails are discussions, right? I mean, you're, you're basically conversing back and forth with people via, via an email communication. Right. You cannot do that anymore. Boards can no longer vote via email and then ratify it at a subsequent board meeting. And that's because owners now have an absolute right to participate. I would say the only exception to that is when the board is trying to make like ministerial decisions such as, you know, when are we gonna meet next? What's the date and time of the next meeting? Things like that, that aren't uh, issues where you're talking about the merits or, or making decisions that will affect all of the owners uh, on a material basis. And and so 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 it's it's basically the condominiums who can't do that. It it doesn't affect the uh, HOAs under four twenty one J. Right, correct. They can still do email decisions. Yes, but it's not uh it's not recommended. 
Okay, and why would you say it's not recommended? Well, let me turn to the statute and forgive me, but it says basically that all meetings of the board of directors other than executive session shall be open to all members to provide input in the matters being discussed. So if you're, dis while an email discussion is technically not a meeting, it really could be viewed as a meeting. If, if all the board members are on an email chain and you're all discussing a particular topic, it could be viewed as a meeting if you're mm -hmm. making a decision at that time. So I think, you know, if nothing else, you're in violation of the spirit of the rule. And it, you know, and right now we hear from legislators, right? And they're talking about complaints they're receiving from owners about a lack of transparency in making decisions. And, you know, the legislature wants us to govern ourselves, right? They don't want to have to govern us by setting all these rules and laws when we could be doing it ourselves with common sense. Once we know what the concerns are and we know we've been put on notice that transparency is a big concern. They right. don't want boards, you know, owners don't want to find out what's going on after the fact, after the after a board has made a decision. They right. want to participate in that decision. Right. And 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 you know, I guess with you know, with the computer and with uh, emails, I mean, uh, the owners are uh, it, it, you know, word just travels very fast, so you know, information, you know, uh, circulates very quickly, you know, and so they want to know how how come we didn't know. I mean, that's right. what you hear a lot. I mean, when, when, when when owners complain, it's always based on how come you didn't tell us? Right. I mean, well, that seems to be the basis of a lot of the complaints. Why didn't you tell us? Well, keep in mind too, notice of, of a board meeting, right? It's typically 72 hours or simultaneous with notice to members of the board. So there's no reason why if, if the board needs to communicate something immediately, then they should be able to get the notice out to everybody and and then have a meeting later that day, that same day, and that would be legal. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're gonna to get to a, a, another topic that's related. We're, we, we've been talking about board meetings. What about annual meetings? Can annual meetings be held remotely? Well, typically that depends on your governing documents. Uh, you know, if your governing documents allow remote meetings, then you can do so. But in my experience, most governing documents don't have a provision that allows for remote meetings. So I know right now we're in the process of drafting numerous amendments for numerous projects to allow virtual annual meetings uh, to basically address the, the situation that we have right now. Uh, because you know, of the pandemic. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. And and you're aware, and you're you're part of the movement too, to have the legislature yes. draft a bill. Yes, yes. Actually, there are several bills right now that are before the legislature um, that will be introduced rather about the ability to hold virtual meetings in an emergency situation, such as we now have with COVID. Okay, and 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 these the legislation that's being proposed, and you and I were talking about before uh, the show. It involves condos and co-ops and community associations. Correct. And, and because it, none of the pro, uh, legislative provisions provide for remote meetings. That's right. That's right. It, so in a, the in a, the only way you can do it is if you amend your governing documents to allow it. Right. And so if you don't amend, and, and, and practically speaking, the legislature starts next week on the 20th. Right. That's the opening day. Right. And I think the deadline for bills is the end of January. Yeah. And, I, and, and you and I were talking about you know, the, the, these drafts that are floating around. And so we expect the bill to be uh, introduced sometime next week yeah. that would allow for these uh, annual meetings to be held remotely. Yes, I know um, Re Representative Erin Johansson is going to be sponsoring uh, one of the bills. And I know uh, Senator Baker has agreed to sponsor it in the Senate. So, you know, we're going to have it sooner rather than later, fortunately. 
And so in, in, if we can fast track it, and you know, the legislature is going to be over by May, but you know, um, and, and so for, for associate, and you know, we all know, we, we, we both know, many associations have not been able to have their annual meetings right. since the COVID, since the pandemic started. Right. And I know some boards that are just adamant. They are not going to hold it uh, anytime soon. They want to wait till the vaccine gets out uh, because they don't want people to gather and they're concerned about their members uh, who are high risk. So yeah. I understand that. And then, so, you know, if we get this legislation, the legislation is going to be introduced sometime next week. So, so by January, you know, there's going to be a bill that's right. going to be floating around somewhere. Yes. And, and the bills will cross. So we have one, and, and, and the bill that amends the rule on meetings, we're going to have one come out on the House side and the Senate side. And the way the legislature works, you know, there's going to be hearings on both sides, and then it yeah. will cross over. The crossover is, is in early March. Right. And if we can get everybody to agree on language in the House and the Senate version, that bill can go up to the governor probably by mid to late March. And, and I don't see any reason why the governor would hold off signing it. So yeah. practically speaking, if we can fast track it, we could have a bill by the end of March or early April. Yes, and that would solve a lot of problems because then you wouldn't have to send out a written consent to try to get everybody's uh, approval to, in order to amend your governing documents. We would have a law that we could rely on. And one of the things that you and I discussed too that I hadn't thought about because I thought the only issue, you know, uh, with these annual meetings was to to change the law to allow the meetings to be held remotely. Mm -hmm. And then somebody uh, brought up the issue of, well, you know, at your annual meetings, you usually have an election and it's right. a secret ballot election. So how do you hold a secret ballot election when you're having a remote meeting? Well, I know the only thing that we could think of at this point was to do directed proxies. You know, where the where you lay everything out on the proxy in terms of all of the nominees and all of the issues that are going to be voted on at the meeting. Every owner gets a directed proxy and then they literally state exactly how they intend to vote on the proxy itself. And then those proxies are provided typically to the members of the board and then the board must vote exactly according to the designation on the proxy. So that's one way of doing it, at least in the short run, until we can get something out there. Right. And then uh, we, I heard from another condominium attorney that there are these uh, digital programs mm. out there that you know can be uh, used uh, to um, uh, have these secret elections. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. I, you know, I don't know the details, but I know that's why. Um, I-14B 121 was amended recently to allow electronic voting. And you know, there, all, there are uh, certain precautionary measures that you've got to go through in order to use it. But that was passed with these voting machines in mind, you know? Oh, so, okay. At least that's my understanding, yes. So, but I, I personally haven't been to a meeting yet that's actually used those. I believe Steve Glanstein probably has. I mean, that was, he's the one that uh, basically, you know, he was behind that bill in order to get it passed. So he knows a lot more about it than I do, but apparently they're already used on the mainland and, uh, and they, they work well. So I think it's just a matter of time before we have that here. Okay, so that's some, something that we need to keep in mind when we start drafting the exact language on these bills that are you know, gonna come out next week. Correct. Right? Yes. And so I guess for those people who are listening, there is hope. Yeah. There is hope. <laughs> right, uh, we're, we're working on uh, getting legislation. Your legislators are working very hard uh, to uh, make sure that these bills get uh, drafted. And uh, hopefully we will have something uh, that will you know, be able to be uh, debated and, and passed in a couple of weeks. Yes. And, you know, we've run out of time. So um, what I'd like to do is to thank you, Laurie, for being with us. My You're pleasure. always full of information. And thank, thank you, you so much for, for being available on this topic. And, um, uh, and I ask all you listeners out there, your, the viewers, to join us next week, Thursday,
for another episode of Condo Insider, the show uh, relating to condo living and for people who work in condos. Thank you very much. All right. Mahalo. Aloha.